Welcome to the initial episode of The Soul of Warren County, where we'll be talking about African-American people, places, and events that help shape the culture of this local area. I'm your host, Mickey Gwynn, and I hope you'll find our programs to be both educational and entertaining as we honor the past and recognize the present. And we're going to do both of those things today as we talk about the recently opened Black History Museum of Warren County, Tennessee. And I'm honored to have as my initial guest, the director and curator of the museum, Mr. Wayne Wolford, Sr. Wayne, welcome to the soul of Warren County. Thank you, I appreciate it. Now I know February was a very hectic month for you. We had that initial grand opening, but for folks who weren't able to attend, talk to us about that vision, or more particularly that voice that encouraged you to pursue a Black History <laughs> Museum for Warren County. Well, we all, in a sense, have a premonition, I guess you would call it. Uh, you're laying in bed, it might be morning, it might be noon, it might be in the middle of the night. And all of a sudden, I was, you know, I get this premonition, which I get several of them, and this voice came to me and said, Wayne, I know you're retired, I know you want to enjoy, but I got another mission for you. And so I looked up and I said, okay, what's that? He said, well, I want you to start a black history museum. And I said, a what? A black history museum? So a lot of times we listen to things like that and other times we let it go by. But I thought, wow, this would be great. And if he said I can do it, I can do it. So that's where it came from. That, that, that gift, that voice that I listened to said, he's gonna put the ball in my court and I'm gonna run with it. And I, from there, everything has been, been super so far. And I'm sure it has to be very fulfilling to have that grand opening and finally open the doors to the museum. It took a while. Uh, I guess the first thing that kind of got me going was my daughter lives in Memphis and we didn't have anything. We didn't have a building or anything and running around trying to find out what I could find. Some prices were too high, some they wanted you to buy, some they wanted you to lease and so forth. So. I had a stumbling block there in the beginning. I didn't know exactly where I was going to start. And then this building came up at the clinic, which is the first, well, one of the first hospitals in McMinnville. And there was a suite there, and it was large enough to get started. And so with this, uh, I talked to my daughter, and I said, first thing we need is display cases. Well, display cases can be very high. We didn't have it $8,000 to begin with. so. She had gone to a car wash and she met a guy that had a trailer full of display cases. <laughs> and he talked with her and she said, you know, they came up with $50 a piece for 20, 20 cases. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh wow, this is gonna work. So to make a long story short, we got all the cases, got them down here, got them in the museum on a Sunday morning. It wasn't 20 cases, it was 26 cases. And it only cost $1,900 because with a little Windex and a little love and care, we got all display cases situated. And from there, that was the blessing. I said, wow, this is great. So that was a start right there. And this was only like about two weeks after we'd gotten the building. Mm -hmm. So this was great. All right, we want to tease the folks a little bit. Uh, can you give us a little mini virtual tour? We don't want to give everything away, but if someone comes down to visit the museum, what might they see? Okay, once you walk in the door, I'll give you a, a pretty good visual. Okay. This used to be a hospital, and in the 30s it was built in the 30s, and then later on they built an upstairs suite in the 40s. And so this was the main hospital for people in Warren County. There's a board when you come in on the left-hand side where if you remember your doctor, Remember, well, quite naturally, you remember what date you were born <laughs> and put your name so. up there. <laughs> then uh, you can put that on there, and that's just historic just for that building. Mm -hmm. Then when you turn around, there's a guest book there at the window where you can sign in, and we've gotten numerous ones so far in, 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 in the beginning. We don't, I don't think I've had anybody international yet, but we've got them as far as New York, uh, Ohio, Michigan, California. So people are coming around and they're really checking it out. Some people have come through town and gone to a certain place and then they said, oh, is this for the Black History Museum? 
And they say, whoa, black history, you got a black history museum here? And then boom, next thing you know, they come knocking on the door. So that's kind of neat. So when you come in and you check it out, there a pla there's a place there where we have all the directors. Uh, we have grant writers, lawyers, retired military, pastors, doctors, you name it. I've got a real good board that surrounds me. So when I get out of hand or I think I'm moving too fast or whatever, <laughs> they say, hey, Wayne, slow your roll down. Okay, it's going to be okay. Look, we need to do this, this, and this, and boom. So we work as a family, and, and, and that's, that's the good part of it. When everybody's battling against one another, you won't get anything done. But when everybody gets together and join as a whole, that works. So when you go through the museum, you will see things like, Coming from the courthouse back in the eight, late 1800s, there's a bench there where the black citizens used to sit upstairs in the courthouse. There are TVs in there that monitor certain things like important people, sports, and, and so forth. Uh, we have a sponsor board there that anytime you want to give a donation, I don't care how small it is or how large it is, we have a board there to where we're going to recognize you. And a lot of these things, can be tax write-off because I know there are people out there that have more money than they know what to do with. So if you want to pass some of it this way so we, we can make this one beautiful feature, please do so. You can go through the museum. There is a sporting room, per se. There is a, a important people room, per se. And there's a military room. These are the ones that are going to be there basically throughout. The others, I will be changing them. Uh, we're working on a program right now I don't know exactly how long, maybe a month, maybe two months, to where we'll have a list. And on this list, we'll have you bring your family, artifacts, history, or whatever, and be displayed there for that particular time. And then after that period of time is gone, then the next family will come in. So we want to have a rotating uh, list or, or change there. Museum, the museum changes all the time. There's a lot of historical artifacts there. There's a lot of things that uh, you want to bring your, your young ones, your grandkids, your great grandkids to see. Uh, we're also going to work on a scavenger hunt to where when you come in, you can have a sheet on the board, uh, a sheet to walk through the museum. Because when kids come through the museum, a lot of times they glance at stuff like that and it doesn't really shake them. But if it's a, a challenge for them, it's three or four of them there, and they want to see which one is the smartest, which one can find this and that. That's a, that, that's a good part there. And this is going to help them see the rich part of Warren County, Tennessee. Good, good. Now, I know back in April there was a special presentation from a very special young man, C.J. Taylor. How did that come about? And what do you think about someone that young having that type of interest in a museum? That's a good thing because that's another part. When people, when you think of museums, a lot of people think of old stuff. <laughs> okay. So we want to have that old stuff and we want to have that new stuff. And especially being in sports, uh, this young man has really succeeded during his time frame. I have not taken anything away from the old school because we've had some brilliant athletes that come from Warren County. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not taking away anything from them. Hopefully I can get more memorabilia and stuff from them in there. But this young man is so talented and so gifted, hopefully one of these days he will be another one from our ranks that will go to the pros. Uh, he is a super athlete for his time frame. And when Brad from the newspaper and Steve Nyland talked, their buddies, and they worked on this presentation and everything, and it worked out good. So... This is just another part of the museum that we're trying to help the community. And from what I understand, he approached the staff of the museum about doing that presentation. Yes, uh-huh. Yeah. Yes, he, uh, yeah, he, he wanted to be recognized, and, and rightly so. You know, right. when you accomplish something like that, that's, uh, that's a great accomplishment, what, he, what he's done for his football and for his basketball and sports, period. He's, he's a, a very uh, intelligent and gifted athlete. And despite some of the comments about our current generation, I think that is a perfect example of how maybe our current generation is going to take care of us. You know, yes, you know, yes. you're hoping maybe 20 years that people will come back and he'll come back and say, yeah, I remember when I won that football award, right. you know, back in 20, uh, 2020, I guess, actually, yes, when he uh -huh. won it. 
but uh, it makes you feel good when yes, you have those does. young people involved. And I know you've been trying to get the young folks up there and get them involved in the museum. Well, I'm a young, I'm a young person, people, as you yeah. call it. <laughs> I used to uh, do substitute teaching in the school system, not only high school, middle school, grade school, but alternative school. And so I had my rounds to, uh, to fulfill, and I wanted that exposure out there because another plus is I don't think I was the first black teacher in integrated schools, a uh, substitute teacher, mm. but I did want to get it out there to where when I was in the classroom, I had that character, I had that persona that where you looked at me, okay, this man knows what he's talking about, this man has been somewhere, you know, and so as you and I know, we don't know about those little beady eyes that are looking at us. It could be our kids, it could be our right. neighbor's kids, or it could be a grown folks. And they look at you and they look at your character and your character speaks for itself. So it might not be during our lifetime, but later on, those little beady eyes looked and said, okay, I remember Mr. Gwynn, I remember Mr. Wolford. Man, they did so and so and so and they did so and so and so. So that's what, not out of character, not out of th this media here, but this is what I want to do. I, I want to be a person that is a character builder. So when a person says so-and-so and so, oh yes, I know exactly who you're talking about. And I think that's probably what's good about a museum. Every day is an opportunity to make history. So it's not something that's static to where, well, we've got these articles in here and there's nothing else that can possibly go in there because that, that issue is over. History is being made every day. Mm -hmm. So as the generations go on and, and accomplishments are made, those are things that are going to be continually populated in the museum. So I, I think you mentioned how it's going to always be a dynamic process where there's going to be things coming in. And you even mentioned about <laughs> so much stuff right now where we're having a problem with space. <laughs> but I think that's a good thing about a museum is the fact that history is going to continually being made and you can bring things and put them in that museum. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned about funding. Now, the, the museum is a nonprofit organization managed by a board of directors. Talk a little bit more about funding. Is there any particular funding activities that are going on now? And, and what other sources of funding, other than maybe just personal donations, are you looking, or have you gotten to this, to this point? Okay, what we're looking for, we're looking for money. <laughs> I don't care whether it's a check, a credit card, or whatever. And these things can be written off. We have a tax exempt, uh, we're in tax exempt status. We're a 501c3 uh, nonprofit organization. And we hope to build off of this. We want to make things better. When you come into the museum, we want you to, to be amazed at what your money has done. Uh, like I said, the amount that you donate is no problem. We accept everything that you uh, can, can give us. Uh, we don't know about the growing portion of it because we are growing so fast within this first year that it is amazing. So with my board, we will have to establish something far as storage because things have to be preserved. Uh, when you have uh, blankets and when you have different artifacts that has to be temperaturized, it has to be cooled or whatever, we need we're getting to the point now where we need a storage area uh, that is going to help us out. The three and a half rooms we have upstairs is not going to be enough very soon. COVID-19 was detrimental to many of us uh, in the past. But as far as the museum was concerned, it gave us more time to develop, uh, to get things organized, to do more thinking. We want to have it to the point to where when you come in, you can probably, uh, we want you to have uh, a piece of audio equipment that you can start and stop when you get ready. So when you go through the museum, you don't have to be toured by us. You can ask us questions, which we can answer, but you can actually go through the museum and turn it off and on. If you see a person or a figure or whatever, you can hit it and it will display and tell you what's going on with that particular uh, individual or item. So we're trying to get it to where it's first class. That's what we're looking at now. So any kind of, uh, uh, we do fundraisers. Now we don't just ask for money, we do fundraisers. We also have a project right now where we're working on very seriously. It's at Ramsey Park, where the old Bernard High School used mm -hmm. to be. And 
we've got three sections there so far, and we're putting down bricks. The bricks can be purchased for $50 or $100, and you can donate them to someone you know or you cared about or your friend or one you graduated with. So it can be in the name of uh, a building. It can be in the name of your organization or cooperation. So anything like that would help us out because that is part of our fundraiser. We will have more fun fundraisers in the future because we don't want just your money. We want to show you that we can try to do things to help ourselves. And I think, and you mentioned about the board of directors, and I must say I'm very honored to be a member of the board of directors for the museum. Uh, but you were talking about the uh, walkway of honor. And I think some of the misconceptions out there, and you may correct me if I'm wrong, is people think it's a memorial walkway. And you just mentioned very well, it's not a memorial walkway. It's not a walkway where we're going to honor someone who's passed, but we're very much looking at, you know, present Correct. honors, whether Correct. it's an organization, whether it's a business, employees at a business Correct. and things of that nature. So yes. I just want to clarify that with folks who may be listening today and say, well, you know, it's for people who passed on. Oh, no, by no means is it for <laughs> people who passed on. It's to honor anyone or any organization that you feel has done good things for, for our community. So I just wanted to, to, to mention that. Okay. Can I add one thing here? Yep. Okay, while we are, uh, are in the process of laying the bricks down, uh, we have one section that we have laid the bricks down already, but we don't have it completely smoothed out and everything like we want it. But we have two other sections, and people that have already purchased bricks, what we're doing is we're trying to get it to where we can get basically 20 bricks at a time ordered because it's not like mailing an envelope where you, you get one brick and, you, and they send it to you and so forth. It's not like that. They come in shipments. So we want you to be patient. If your name isn't in the first section, you can call me, area code 931-212-6609, Wayne Wolford, and I can explain basically when that time frame is that your bricks will come in. Now, if your bricks, if we don't have enough for the other two sections right now, we want to bring them into the museum and lay them out so you can actually see your actual brick before we place it. So please be patient with us. And, and you, you mentioned about uh, donations and fundraising, and all, obviously that's part of it. But probably one of the most important things we hadn't mentioned yet is how much does it cost to come through the door? It's astronomical. <laughs> when you come through the door, you're going to have to pay a lot of money to get in. Oh, correction. I'm sorry. It's free. It's free. <laughs> and, and you may be wondering about, well, why do they need donations? Because it's free. You come in and you get a tour of the museum and you get to look at the history of this area and it's free. So, yes. you know, you, you got to always have some expenses. So the fundraiser helps us pay those expenses. But uh, most importantly, it's free. Yes. Going to the museum is free. Uh, looking into the future, say 10 years down the road, what is your vision for the museum? Where do you see the museum at in, say, 10 years? I see the museum growing tremendously, not only Warren County, not only Tennessee, not only the United States, but we're going to get some contacts from the world because we're going to make this something unique. There are not that many black history museums in Tennessee or basically in the United States, to tell you the truth. In a matter of 10 years, I see where we can reach out and educate a lot of people about the history, the way it was and the way it is. It's hard for me to say about what area or what other location we'll be in because we are blessed to have the building that we're in now and it could be a possibility that we could actually own the whole building but that's just a possibility. I would love to see that where we can have handicap accessible, uh, have more areas where kids can be able to function and learn because this is one of the main things to, to get educated. I, I was so proud to have the Warren County superintendent and his staff and coordinators to come through last week. They seem to really enjoy this. They seem to really want to help. 
So once I get the teachers and the students, not only from Warren County, but surrounding counties, and maybe even as far as Nashville and Chattanooga, to have field trips and come and spend time with us, not only bringing tourism into McMinnville, but it'll be a great feature for us. We want this museum to be unique. So when you say 10 years from now, I hope it's out of sight. And we do too. We, we're really, really wishing for that. And you mentioned education. I, I think that's been one of the themes that you've always projected from very, the very beginning. Not just people walking through and, and looking at pictures or looking at items, but walking out with something new, with, with some education about the individuals, what they did, the things of that nature. And you mentioned that again. Education is important too, as far as your management of the museum. Yes, yes. Yeah. The reason I say that is because uh, we're still working on some of the history that was done in Warren County when Warren County was being built and coming on to this time frame. We have certain time frames where we live with and we have to live with it because that's the way it was in that time frame. The special thing about me is I was born in Alton, Illinois and I moved to St. Louis and when my grandparent decided to come home to McMinnville. They built a home and my mother let me come here every other year. So I was in St. Louis, Missouri for a year and I'd come here. So every other year I got to go to Bernard. I got to mm -hmm. go to uh, Pleasant Hill for six months. And so I got to experience this. And I can't really speak for the people, the black citizens that lived here their whole life and didn't experience what I experienced. Because at 13 to 14 years old, I could go to the bus stop, get on, sit anywhere I wanted to in the bus, go downtown. We had a couple of places like Macy's downtown, go in. They had grills in there, places, restaurants where you could eat, go in, shake, hamburger, french fries, enjoy yourself, laugh, joke, talk, nobody look at you, nothing like that. Go in the front door, go out the front door. But when I came to McMinnville and realized that I couldn't go in the front of a restaurant, I couldn't go in the front of a store, basically. And if I wanted food, I'd have to go around the back and order the food, and there wasn't even a place to sit down. So that was hard for me to digest because why would I want to do something like that when I knew somewhere else it was freedom? Mm -hmm. And so... I had to adapt to McMinnville mentality compared to St. Louis mentality. Even when we were young, we walked the streets at night. If it was two of us or three or four of us, when the police car came through, we had to book. We had to take mm -hmm. off <laughs> because we didn't know what was going to happen. Right. But that's the way it was at that time. So this, to me, when I explain that to uh, people coming into the museum, they look at me and say, wow, you're not that old. But yes, yeah, I have lived it. So I can experience, I have the experience to, to explain what was going on during that time and how well we have adapted. And we're changing. We're steadily changing. Right. All the change isn't there, but we're steadily changing. Right now, we're 1% of McMinnville, but we have so much support from everyone in Warren County. And I think if you look at the board of directors, you can see that, you know, it's not a you know, black only board of directors, very diversified. And I think that points to the fact that you know, when it comes to history and the culture of this area, it's not race specific. Mm -hmm. We all were part of that history. Mm -hmm. And we talked the other day about uh, graduates of, of Bernard School. And I think we're probably down close to single digits of actual graduates from Bernard School. Yes, you know, right. a lot of us went to Bernard. Right. I went to Bernard. Matter of fact, I went there twice right. as Bernard and <laughs> I think it was Southside Annex the second time. <laughs> but to find actual graduates of that school yeah. is, is very scarce right now because yes. of, 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 of the years. The years mm -hmm. have gone by. And, and I think once again, the museum does a good part in capturing some of that experience from those graduates who, who are still with us. You know, we're still with us and we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So so I know there's a, a lot of uh, ideas that you have. One thing I know you talked about was maybe doing, if we get to the point where we have enough space, of doing sort of a themed room for a specific individual. We talked about uh, people like you know Lester Strode and T.C. Cope and, and my brother Mark Gwynn and just focusing on that one individual 
and having their artifacts in there and maybe having them come to the museum to do an autograph session and things of that nature. So I know there's a lot of plans to, to make the museum much more expansive than it is now. So is. we're hoping that indeed that will, that will help and, and the board of directors along with you we're trying to make those plans so this will keep going after yes. we're gone. Right. You know, that's, right. uh, that's I think, our main purpose is to mm -hmm. make sure that the museum Preserve is set up so it'll continue, continue yep. to show that history for years to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Wayne, thanks for being on the show today. I really do appreciate it. Uh, we're highly encouraging everyone to go down and tour the museum. I think there's something there for every generation. Uh, if you walk through, you'll probably see something that will bring back some pleasant memories. And thank you for joining us for this initial episode of The Soul of Warren County. I'm Mickey Gwynn, and I'm wishing everyone a great rest of the day.